so the congenital heart defects most of them the four chamber view is very important in the four chamber view only you can uh, diagnose major septal defects okay when there is a don't worry about the asd okay a lot of people know about asd don't worry about asd but major septal defect like a single ventricle uh, large vsd okay major large corner ventricular vsd and all those are very important so that you can diagnose in the septal uh, this thing the other in four chamber view what you can do when there is a ventricular disproportion the rv and lv is not uh, of the same size so either hypoplastic left heart syndrome hypoplastic right heart syndrome you can diagnose in a four chamber view major valve lesions like tricuspid atresia mitral atresia you can diagnose in a four chamber view okay ventricular function okay that is very important rhythm problems whether there is one is to one as i said you you can use a pulse doppler uh, at, across the mitral valve okay and look for if there is a this thing and effusion pericardial effusion these are the important things where you can significantly assess in when you combine a four chamber view with the outflow view okay the great arteries when you assess you can you can diagnose uh, conditions like transposition of great arteries tetralogy of fallow dorv truncus arteriosus and any most of the uh, arch anomalies you go for the next uh, level but you definitely um, four chamber and the great artery assessment you can diagnose significant problems okay so uh, what we need to do is we also need to understand that every child there is a patent for a manual so and the shunting pattern across the asd so there is no need for us to always report okay there is a asd and also that itself uh, will actually give a um, uh, sense of um, uh, the the, pa uh, the patient gets worried okay so don't report or don't say that there is a asd fossa valis asd there is a pda and all in your fetal echo okay that is normal part of fetal circulation what you can rate you can rate is pay, you can stop writing patent for pfo pda normal shunting pattern okay that is a good way to report normal shunting pattern across the uh, pfo and pda branch pulmonary arteries will be small because the flow across the pulmonary artery branch pulmonary arteries are less okay everything is getting shunted right to left across the pda okay so the branch pulmonary arteries tend to be small okay so some lesions okay we might not be able to uh, uh, diagnose at uh, 16 to 20 weeks of age like valvar pulmonary stenosis valvar aortic stenosis that might be this and also it might be little difficult for the starters beginners to assess the pulmonary veins okay anomaly uh, so pulmonary is a type of but definitely with the newer uh, good imaging things and with skills definitely you can um, uh, we can definitely suspect and uh, uh, antenatal diagnosis of uh, anomalous pulmonary venous drainage is also been done okay so so why is why is it important to do a proper uh, fetal echocardiography okay so what is it important to a countries like us is like uh, because uh, you all know uh, we have limited reasonably limited uh, resources so a uh, family with hypoplastic left heart or a tricuspid atresia single ventricle okay so if they have to undergo three surgeries if the diagnosis was done postnatally okay uh, definitely it would be a huge burden okay and with the, especially with the limited resources available in our country definitely it is going to be a burden both to the society and to the family okay so and <clears throat> There are also unfavorable outcomes, okay, hypoplastic left heart, fontan and all, they don't have good reasonable long term, all single ventricles on average, yeah, the you can keep a ballpoint figure, so they need three surgeries, the outcome or their uh, longevity is on, on average 15 to 20 years, it can range, uh, it can vary, but on an average, the life expectancy is only 15, if it is a complex single ventricle, this thing, okay, and also, uh diagnosis early diagnosis and antenatal diagnosis is also important when because um <clears throat> if uh, the diagnosis was not done before and the diagnosis was done postnatally a uh, congenital heart disease and if it's a treatable and if it is delivered at a periphery what has to be done it has the child has to be transported to a, a center where congenital heart disease uh, is treated so if the antenatal diagnosis was done and the parents are ready uh, to undergo the surgery the child born so it's always better to uh, transport or antenatal diagnosed uh, mother itself to deliver in a center where there is early access to pediatric uh, cardiac care okay so that is the uh, importance and the outcomes are definitely shown that if you uh, in utero transfer okay the mother mother is the safest mode of transport so in utero transfer is the best than postnatal you put on ventilator and all patient would, would be 
not uh, uh, doing well okay so <clears throat> so what do you what are the possible outcomes of a fetal echo okay so uh, so when you do a fetal echo and you say normal study definitely yeah parents are relieved if there is a congenital heart disease what okay whether it is what you need to do is if it is a congenital heart disease we have to out, give a proper counseling so that the parents take a proper informed decisions okay so that that way we need to uh, that way we need to uh, look at um, uh, giving a better just a counseling okay you would you would we just call it as an informed decisions okay you counsel such that they take a uh, parent take a informed decisions okay if you detect early and if it's a hypoplastic left heart and all that so they you can give them a counseling and they can decide what what best before uh, 20 weeks what best needs to be done but whereas if it is diagnosed a little late definitely you can uh, help the family to plan uh, the delivery and so that the outcomes are uh, better you can redirect them to a uh, to a place where there is a pediatric cardiac care and similarly uh, if they if you have diagnosed an arrhythmia okay there are definitely there are a lot of uh, supraventricular tachycardias okay which we diagnose when there is a tachycardia and abnormality so you can we can give medicines so that the tachycardia svt is controlled otherwise if you don't uh, control the arrhythmia they can end up in high drops okay so that is also a life saving uh, uh, thing okay uh, even though yeah see it doesn't mean that uh, you have to this thing uh, uh, you, uh, there are places or play, uh, centers where the tfa scans or the fetal echo was not done on time but still uh, even if it is a uh, late diagnosis uh, uh, definite uh, uh, therapy can be possible if there is a uh, delivery which can happen near the many uh, center which has a pediatric cardiac care okay so the ideal situation for anyone is for prevention of congenital heart diseases. So all pregnant, effective, uh, all pregnant women are get uh, are screened and uh, do a proper thorough TIFA scan. And in the TIFA scan, if uh, any abnormal uh, it is uh, the detected of the heart, then you go for a complete targeted congenital heart disease. And if you have a complete um, assessment of the heart, and then you so that the parent can have a uh, significant uh, the outcome of the baby from uh, to which is which might be born of congenital heart disease can be much better okay so in the idealistic situation yeah whether everybody can undergo a fetal echo yeah today's world you definitely uh, if it is that is the possibility when you screen that is there uh, uh, that is the idealistic uh, world uh, Yes, uh, in the West, people do, uh, all of them do get a TIFA scan and a fetal echo. Nowadays, in ours also, things have changed. At least they are trying to get a TIFA scan, three scan, then the TIFA scan. But at the right time, it is more uh, important. And if you have a better detection of congenital heart disease, you can definitely, see, it's not all, all congenital heart disease aren't bad, okay? The outcomes of congenital heart disease have significantly changed over the years. And uh, today, uh, what I would say is, uh, more than 90% of uh, the heart diseases uh, can be offered, 90 to 95% of the heart disease can be offered some type of uh, treatment or a palliation uh, so that they have a good uh, prognosis. But how to de decrease the burden of uh, single ventricles and complex is a thing to ponder. But definitely, uh, you can detect by doing a proper fetal uh, echo. Okay. So, so what are the current uh, priorities so prenatal diagnosis of congenital current, current priorities will be any child who has a previous child with congenital heart disease counsel for fetal echo in the next pregnancy okay use the combination of four chamber and outflow views in all cases okay make sure that you uh, don't miss out a major this thing early refer uh, okay don't do a fetal echo at uh, 30 weeks 34 weeks don't early referral so that less than 20 weeks so uh, we can uh, that's an ideal time to do a fetal echo okay and if at all any diagnosis was done later on uh, after uh, 20 weeks okay so encourage in utero transfer of fetuses to critical uh, uh, with critical congenital heart disease but definitely salvageable what is it like transposition of great arteries or a tapvc you have or a pulmonary atresia these all have a good uh, reasonably good outcome if they are delivered at a near place okay and <clears throat> So it's a, it has to be a team based uh, this thing, and uh, always uh, if you have a diagnosis and abnormality, inform um, the out uh, inform the referring team. 
okay so be a part of that team